Hi, everybody, and welcome to Michael Antonio Live. And what a day this has been. I'm really getting on here to talk about what's been going on in the last few years here. It's Everything seems to be coming to a head. Do you guys feel that? The hatred, the vitriol. I mean, today we have this situation where, you know, we, we had this police officer who did a bad thing. He killed a man. He killed a man, which I thought, I don't think he meant to kill him, but he was, you know, he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. You don't put your knee on a man's neck and expect good results. That's a terrible thing. And so poor George Floyd uh, was was killed by this action. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want to call it murder because I don't think that was the intention, but it was it was an improper action by the police. And uh, believe me, they're going to get to the bottom of it. Justice will be served. But now you're seeing these protests, and it's getting worse than that. Now you are seeing violence erupt. I mean, horrible violence and looting and all kinds of terrible things. I'll show you here what's happening in one of the stories that I have on my webpage here at michaelantonio.biz. And I got to tell you, uh, I can't even believe what's happening right now in this country. It's The hatred is so thick and so incredibly abusive. I'm going to tell you. If you stick around, I'm going to tell you a story about what happened to me very recently. Uh, someone who is close to me, who I thought was a different person than who they are. And they really surprised me in a bad way. So if you stick with me, we'll uh, you'll hear about that in a little bit. First, let me get to this story here. We've got these stories how this... I mean, literally, these protesters are looting in Minneapolis. I heard there's riots in L.A. I mean, there's, there's just this, this incredible, like, there's all this anger is coming to a head. And I don't think it's just because of, uh, this, this, this incident in, uh, Minneapolis. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's, I think it's everything coming to a head here. You have so much tension. You have, you have governors of states and, and mayors of cities telling people they got to stay home and they can't. When they do go out into public for any reason, they got to wear a mask all the time, and they're being arrested for going to the park and all these things. And I think when you have all that, you get a lot of tensions that just flare right up. So I'll just read this particular article here. Protesters start looting in Minneapolis following George Floyd's death. It says here that uh, some of the people protesting George Floyd's killing are resorting to looting as the tensions between citizens and cops in Minneapolis continue to escalate. As the second day of demonstrations continued Wednesday, hundreds came face-to-face with officers armed with riot gear. Some groups of protesters started looting a Target store. Speaking of Targets, they went in there and they decimated the place. I wish I could show you that picture. Maybe I can. Let's go to Twitter here. I saw a picture earlier, and they literally, actually it was a video, and... You could see what they did to this Target store. The interior of the Target store was just incredibly destroyed. You wouldn't even believe what happened to that place. Um, I don't think you need to see it. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, they, they literally just took the place apart. There was nothing on the shelves, stuff all over the floors, and uh, just a horrific mess. And it's all over this incident and just the tensions that are coming through here. But, you know, also... I don't, I don't justify what these guys are doing. Some of these people are just opportunists. What they're doing is they're using that incident to justify looting and stealing and causing all these problems because they think they can get away with it. That's what they're, you know, they just feel like, oh, this is the time I can get away with it. Oh, what are they going to do? They're a racist. I'll just call them a racist for trying to arrest me or trying to stop me from doing what I'm doing here. So to them, it's not even a crime, even though it is. They're committing a crime. They're stealing, and they think it's okay because of some something that happened, not to them, but to somebody else. And, of course, they used it based on color. They're going to say, well, because I'm the same color as the person that it hurt that was murdered. You know, they say he was murdered. Um, all of a sudden, now, that, that justifies uh, me going out there and doing these terrible things. And that's what's happening. Now, again, I don't know what this police officer was uh, feeling when he did what he did. 
I'm not, I'm not going to justify his actions. What he did was wrong. I saw the video like everybody else, and what he did was absolutely wrong. There was no reason to do what he did. Now, if it was a department directive based on long-standing policy, then those policies obviously need to be changed. That's the way I look at it. But, man, I mean, this is just horrific. You know, it's horrific. So they're talking about it here. What they're saying is, uh, in, this, in this story, uh, as you can see here, um, you've got, uh, you sh that's the incident with a police officer, what he did. And again, it was absolutely wrong. And, and believe me, he will be dealt with, justice will be served. And I think people need to understand that. I don't think we need to worry about that. And I understand the anger and the outrage. I'm, I'm angry as a human being. I don't care. To me, color doesn't have a lot of meaning. I don't know why we're making this, you know, these racial wars and everything that's going on right now is absolutely unnecessary. I don't understand it. I think it has been fomented by opportunists, people who want to gain from the anger that they create. They foment all this anger and this resentment, and then they say, ah, oh, yeah, we have a way out. We can help you with that. We can do something for you. We can fill your coffers with all kinds of goodies, and we're going to help you out. The problem with that is, is that, you know, you know, these problems never get solved. So people continue to live as, you know, they have for decades. They never get any real help. And that's what you've seen with the old guard. It's what I call the old guard. These people that have been in power for how many years now? Nothing gets done. Then, of course, Trump comes into office, and what happens immediately? Boom, the economy starts exploding and starts raging in, in good ways. The problem is you've got people that are so incredibly brainwashed into believing that, no, that must have been Obama. He must have done that. It, you know, it was because of Obama's work. Then why didn't it happen in like the first four years? You see, it doesn't take eight years for an economy to bounce back. It doesn't take eight years. Ronald Reagan had a very similar economy when he came into office. It was less than three years into his first term, the economy came raging and roaring back to life. Well, Trump did it in less time. So the point is, it isn't what people think it is. You know, attitude has a lot to do with it. When a, when a president comes into office and he is touting business, and he's and he's he's talking about reviving industry in other words lowering taxes lowering restrictions and regulations and in other words giving businesses an incentive to do business and to increase their reach you know to build more factories to do whatever it is they want to do i don't think a lot of the factories that left this country for other countries i don't think they really wanted to necessarily go to those other countries it's probably a lot easier to do business in America and uh, better for them if they stay here. But it became cost prohibitive for them to do it. And that's why they had to leave. Donald Trump said, let's change that. Let's do something different. And so here we are. Well, the economy went into the crapper again because of this virus. And now we have, you know, we're going to just have to rebuild it. Who do I trust? Well, we already know Trump has done a good job uh, when he first came in. He has delivered on his promises, so I would say he is someone you can trust. He has the clout. This man has a track record of success. Remember, 99% plus business success rating. 99% plus. 99. Come on, guys. You can say what you want about a few business failures, if you want to call them that. Restructuring. He took a couple of businesses out of like almost what he has almost he has almost like five hundred businesses and he had like a, just a less than a handful of them had some issues and so what did he do he restructured that's what every business does every big business does that they restructure to help themselves that's how you do it so you have this going on and you have this look at this you got this you got these guys I mean these people are being chased in the streets. These people are out of their minds. They're angry, and I don't know if they, you know, I, I'm sure a few of them are truly angry at what happened. I am. I'm truly angry at what happened. I didn't want to see that happen. I think it was deplorable what that cop did. He should not have done what he did. It was, it was horrible. 
But the thing is, you don't loot things. You don't loot places and cause problems and hurt other people simply because one man did a terrible thing. That's not the way to, that's not the way we do things here in this country. And if you do it like this, you know, you need to be punished by law. Justice needs to come to you if you're going to do this kind of stuff. So it's really just, uh, man. Wow. So they say cops have already fired tear gas. So we know that, you know, we know that, uh, that is something that's happening right now as we speak. So, you know, we have, uh, well, we have a real mess in this country. And, and that, and let me, let me get to this. We've talked enough about this whole looting situation, but we got to get to this, uh, we got to get to this whole situation of the hatred and the anger that's happening in this country. And it's, it's something that I'm not even just talking, I'm not even, I'm not talking about one side or another really singling anybody out, but I think it's just overall, there's such an anger. I think you have to teach people, you have to teach people that you can have differences of opinion without all of this just violent thought processes and anger and hatred. And so I'm, I'm going to tell you something that happened to me very recently with someone who I thought that I knew. This person, uh, very nice person. You know, I thought just an incredible, wonderful person. But what do they do? They got angry. They said something the other day that made me take great pause. And like I said, it was, it was kind of jarring. I mean, it really changed, it changed the way I thought about them as a person. It really made me think. And I'm, uh, it hurt me. I'll be honest. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It really hurt me a lot. It sent me reeling because, you know, I know we get angry sometimes. We say things about, our opponents, the people who don't think the way we do and want to create political turmoil, especially our leadership. Now, I think it's one thing to be angry at your leaders and kind of throw a little epithet at them or something or say, look, that guy sucks. He sucks. He's horrible. You know, I understand those things. But when you start attacking the rank and file, the American citizen, the regular guy and gal, Look, they're just trying the best they can to live. Yes, I know many of them disagree with you. They disagree with me. You know, I know many of them can get annoying at times. But, you know, when it comes to the point of hating them so much that you wish harm to them, you know what, I think it's time for a time out. You need to really rethink the way you think. You need to get some love in your life at that point. And I don't mean romantic love or any of that. So I mean agape love, Philadelphia love, love for your fellow man. You really need to have a love inside of you that's going to change the way you think. So let me just say this person was dealing with the whole political landscape and what's happening in our politics here in America. And as you know, we're trying to open up this country, and President Trump mentioned something the other day about reopening churches for worshipers, because that's, you know, it's time. You know, they need to worship God in the way they want to worship God. And so this is something that, you know, you, you have arguments on both sides, and I understand the arguments. I do. But we also know that scientifically speaking, we know enough about this virus now to know that I think it would be safe to open churches. I really believe that. But this person had the audacity to say to me about worshipers, if they go to church like this, if they're going to go out and go to church, they said, I hope they get sick and die. And the reason why this person wanted them to get sick and die so they wouldn't be able to vote for Trump in November. I want you to think about that for a minute. I want you to really meditate on what I just said. There are people in this country and in the world in general, I'm sure. I don't think it's 
I don't think it's uh, exclusive to America. But this person literally said they wanted churchgoers to get sick and die so they wouldn't be able to vote for Donald Trump. Now, I know, look, I understand the frustration with our political leaders. And I understand there are people that are not going to agree with my vote and what I believe, my worldview. I understand that. But you know what? There comes a point where you got to leave the hatefulness towards people somewhere. you got to dump it. you got to get rid of it, guys. This is horrible. I'm really, I am so incredibly angry, not only at this person for what they said, but I'm angry at the whole situation. This has to stop, and it needs to stop now. You've got you know, rioting and looting in the streets and in stores. You've got, you've got violence everywhere. You've got people wishing violence upon others, wishing death upon those that you uh, have a disagreement with. I mean, this is what's happening in this country. And I'm frankly saddened and angry. And I don't know if I'll ever be the same. I don't know. It's that bad. I'm really getting, I'm, uh, I'm getting emotional about this right now because I don't know where to go from here. Because you can't change. Hearts don't change that easily, if at all. When you have somebody that's so angry and hates our president so much, and even hates the people that support our president that much, that they wish them to die? A means to an end? Guys, this has to stop, and it has to stop now. So I'm going to try to help this process. Because remember, I'm a person that looks for solutions. I may not always find the solution, but I'm going to look for it. So what I did do is I, I created a uh, Facebook group. I call it Peace Conference. And if you find it here, it's, it's under facebook.com slash groups slash peace dot purpose. And I really am trying to, to create a forum where people can heal up a broken relationship or, and I don't mean again, I don't mean a romantic situation or maybe. And maybe couples are having a problem right now with this, and they really need to fix this thing. They need to find a way to fix it. But it isn't just for couples. It's for anyone that has a problem. Maybe they have a best friend or any friend, someone who they thought they knew. They thought they could uh, they could confide in them and live with them in peace no matter what. Well, we're finding out that um, that no matter what, it isn't. It's nothing. It doesn't exist. That that what is a, is a not. I don't understand what's happening here. It's amazing. The people that I used to be really good friends with, there's people that I, that I, um, would I hang out with and just enjoy their company. We would, we, we talked about so many different subjects. Depending on the friend, it was, if it was somebody that, that was a fellow musician or someone who, uh, went, I went to college with or, you know, any kind of interest. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever interest that I had that I shared with them. Or if they were just a friend in general, you're, some of these people have turned their back on me simply because of a belief. And it's not even a bad belief. It's just I, I believe in, in what Donald Trump is doing. That's it. I don't know him as a, as a person. I'm not personal friends with him. I do know a few people who were friends with him. And some of them knew, some of the people that I also know who knew personal friends of his. And I never heard bad things from these people. So again, I still, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about the personal side of Donald Trump. You know, he's, a, he can be a little bit abrasive sometimes, but the point is, I didn't, I didn't hire him. I didn't vote for Donald Trump so that he could be my best buddy and have a beer with me and we could hang out. I hired him to do a job because the politicians for the last 50 years and beyond have not done their job. They've made things more difficult on Americans. They've made it tough for us to live our lives in freedom and peace. So I wanted to try somebody a little bit different this time. And guess what we got? We got the promises kept. We got someone who actually said they're going to do it, and they are doing it. They're, at least they're trying to get it done. No, they got a lot done. 
you know, Trump, he accomplished so much more than I even thought at this point. But he could have got even more done if it wasn't for the people blocking him. There are politicians today that are blocking his, his, uh, you know, uh, his progress. They're impeding his advancement. And that's something that, you know, the American people do have power over as well. We can vote these people out. And see, that's, that was always my wish. You know, I never, I never wished for someone like a Barack Obama or any of these people, even Hillary Clinton, I don't wish death on these people. I don't wish horrible things. I just wish retirement on them. I want them to retire. Go somewhere to a sandy beach or to your backyard, swim in your pool, enjoy your life, and just get out of politics and leave us alone. That's what I want from my politicians. Your job is to protect my freedoms. That's it. No more, no less, and get out of my way. That's what I want. And if you're not doing that, if you're impeding my progress, or if you're if you're even going further to attack and to harm me, then I just want you voted out. I want you gone. Whether it be by regular ballot or by recall, just get out. That's what I want. But I don't wish I don't wish harm or death on these people. That's a horrible thought. You know, if you wish harm or death on people like that, then that's a you problem. You better fix your problem. You better fix it quick. I'm getting tired of this stuff, and it's happening all over America. I'm seeing this anger come to a head. So let's fix it, guys. Now, you can check out my little group here, Peace Conference, here on Facebook. Like I said, look uh, look me up at peace.purpose, Peace Conference. Um, and I will. I am the admin there, Michael Antonio, so don't forget. Even if you don't want to do that, again, find a way, guys, if you got to meditate. I want everybody that's listening to this, please, I want you to meditate and I want you to pray that God touches your heart and changes it. And I'm not just talking to people on the left wing. You know, I'm not just talking to Democrats. I'm talking to my friends. I'm talking to Republicans and, and people that I have, you know, fellow patriots that I have joined together with in this fight against tyranny. Some of us need to get our crap together. We need to, we need to understand what we're fighting for. We are fighting for freedom, but we're also fighting to change hearts. We want to change people's hearts, and you're not going to change their heart if you hate them so much that you want them dead. You're not going to change hearts if you want somebody dead or harmed. Okay. No, you want them changed. You want them to repent of their bad ideas and their bad thoughts and their bad deeds. And you want them to turn to what is right. That's what you want. And that's what I want. That's what I pray for. And let me tell you, when I do get bad thoughts for people, and it happens, it enters me. Look, I'm a human being. I'm just like everybody else, guys. But when I get those bad thoughts, here's what I do. I pray. And I ask God, please help me. Help me not have that hatred. Help me to love others, even if I disagree with them. You know, I'm never going to stop arguing with people. I'm never going to stop debating and contending for the faith. I'm never going to stop that, no matter what it is I believe in. But I am going to always pray for peace and to love others. And that's why, again, when I say to someone that I disagree with you, I don't agree with that with that idea that you're putting forward, but you know what? I'm doing it in love. I'm doing it because I understand I want them to see a better way, and I want them to have a better future. And I think that's, you know, that's why I argue. That's why I am in this fight. I'm not in this fight to hurt them. I'm in this fight to help them. And so should you be. So please, go to Peace Conference. Healing broken relationships, what I want you to do is, this is what I wrote on here, just just to give you an idea of what I'm trying to accomplish. It says, this gathering of rational adults was born to bring an end to the prideful animosity among all of us who allow disagreements to destroy our relationships. We will never agree on everything, but that is the price we pay for our freedom of thought. Let's not pay for the unnecessary greater price of broken friendships and families. Your mission. Now remember, this is your mission, guys. I want you, everyone that's listening here, I want you to do this. Invite a friend you've been fighting 
and post a comment praising the things you love about that person. Okay, are you getting what I'm saying? I want you to literally go on to Peace Conference, and I want you to post something about a friend that you've been fighting with, but I want you to post not about the arguments you've had with them, not about any kind of contentions, or about what they did to you or what you might have done to them. I want you to comment praising the things you love about them, even if it's one little thing. Even if you have trouble finding something, I want you to find something. Find something good about them that you like, that maybe the thing that drew you to them as a friend or a lover. I want you to find it, and I want you to post it, and I want you to tag that friend in the post. If you're still friends with them on Facebook, of course, if you're not, then just, just you know, I want you to mention them, and I want you to just say it. And if, if somebody And if somebody knows about what's going on between the two of you, if they could find that friend and tag them somehow and bring them to it, just to let them know, you know, they're loved. They're still loved. This is really emotional for me. Because there's people that I love and I care about, and I can't I can't even be friends with them right now. I can't even talk to them because they either blocked me, or I might have blocked them because they were so vile at some point, and so angry, and wished harm upon me, or whatever it was. And it hurts. It hurts to deal with these things. So, I really want you to do that. Just I want you to post, even if it's just one good thing, even if it's one small thing, post a good thing about that friend. Maybe it's a good thing they did for you one time. Maybe it's a good, you know, maybe it's just something about them that's just so endearing that you got to mention it. I don't care how, I don't care if it's their, their smile. I don't care if they have a crooked little smile that's just so cute that you want to, you know, go give them a big hug. But, oh, but don't hug them yet. Remember social distancing. <laughs> Let's not go crazy over here. But no, seriously, just I really, I want you to, I don't care what it is, just do it. And so, of course, I write, Will you take the first step to invite your friends and loved ones to this group and begin the healing? Let's start to heal. And I realize we're in the full swing of this election cycle, but you know what? I just want people to understand something. Anybody here, by the way, if you are, well, if you're a person who's not on the left wing or if you didn't vote for Donald Trump, if you're listening to this, I really want you to listen to this. This is very important. And if you're not, if you're a friend of someone who's on the left, please share this video with them. I want them to see this and hear this. I want you to know that I love you and that we love you. The people that support Donald Trump, we love you. We really do. We want what's best for you. And I want you to understand that no matter what happens, whether Donald Trump wins or loses, we still love you. We really do. And you have to understand that, you know, we went through this. Believe me, it was the same thing. When Barack Obama was elected, he said some things that were so incendiary to conservatives, to people who didn't quite, they didn't want what Obama was bringing. He said he was going to fundamentally transform America. We didn't want America to be fundamentally transformed because it was doing fine the way it was. America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. It's all about freedom. We have a constitution that protects us from tyranny, at least it's supposed to. If some of these leftists that are in power would get out of the way and allow us to have our freedoms, they don't, they're not supposed to do this. They're not supposed to be doing what they're doing. But the point is, what America stands for is awesome and wonderful. We have been growing. We grew out of a lot of bad things, of course. In the beginning, there was a lot of, there was a lot of scars. There was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of problems. But you know, that's what happens when you grow as a nation, even as a person. When you're a young person, how many young people do you know? They're just, I mean, we, we are just a bunch of troublemakers, man. I mean, I look back on my youth. I, I might not have been a bad guy per se, but I got to tell you what, I know that some of the attitudes I had and some of the things I said, I know I made mistakes now. I look back and I say, how terrible of me. What in the world was wrong with me? What was I thinking? That's America. America, we, we you know, we were born out of greatness. I mean, we, you know, we came out looking looking fantastic as far as what we wanted the things we wanted were great but the problem is you know the ideal is is always better than the reality so you got to kind of grow into yourself and that's what america has been doing but then you get a guy that comes along barack obama and then he says well no i want to change all that and make it something different well of course you're going to get anger of course you're going to get the tea party coming up and saying ah, hold it 
But, you know, I, I didn't see the kind of anger that I'm seeing now, though. I mean, these people, the people that hate Donald Trump, there's something different about you guys, and you really need to think about what you're doing. Because you're not going to get it accomplished. Even if you somehow find a way to win this election against Donald Trump, do you think that's going to really change anything? Do you think it's going to get better? No, because you already have a lot of people that hate Donald Trump so much, they've already said they're going to take it out on the, on the Trump voters. So if, if, if somehow, I think it doesn't even matter whether he wins or not in that situation. In fact, it might even turn out worse. I think if Trump wins, you're going to see such violence by people who have already promised to take their wrath out on Trump voters. What a horrible thing. Look, I voted for John McCain. I voted for Mitt Romney. I didn't vote for Barack Obama. But I kind of knew in my heart that Barack Obama was going to win those elections. I did. I didn't want that, but I knew it. And so I prepared myself. You know what I did, guys? And this is what I want you to do. If you're, if you're a Democrat or a Republican, no matter who you are, I want you to pray. And I want you to pray as much as you can for peace, no matter what happens. And that means even if your side loses. And I'm, I'm doing that myself. If Donald Trump loses this election, I'm praying for peace in my own heart so that I can withstand everything that comes with that. And that's what you should be praying for. Even if you're a Democrat and Trump wins, you know what? Pray for peace. You pray for peace in your heart. Because right now there's a lot of people with a lot of hatred in their heart. And I'm not liking it. I, I think it's a horrible thing. I think it doesn't serve us well. You think you're doing, you think that you're doing everybody a favor by wishing death upon Trump voters or Donald Trump himself or, you know, you think that's a good thing, but it's not. No, peace is a good thing. Loving those that you loved for so long. And then all of a sudden you hated them because they voted for Donald Trump. I have close friends that voted for Barack Obama. Yeah, I do. And you know what? I don't love them any less. I don't agree with their decision. I don't understand it. But, it, you know, again, it's, it's, you have to kind of compartmentalize those things. I can, I can actually disagree with somebody and I can disagree vehemently. I mean, I can be in total opposition to what they believe in and I can still love them. And let me wax religious here for a second. That's the way Jesus is. Jesus can disagree with you vehemently. He can be totally against what you stand for, but he loves you anyway. He's drawing you to him. And I want, I want all people to understand that. If you want to draw somebody to your side, love them. That doesn't always mean it's going to be clean. Sometimes it's going to be ugly on the way to loving them, to get it right. But... Ultimately, when you start having that bad feeling, you better get into prayer, and you better meditate, and you better be ready to love. Just say, hey, you know what? I love you anyway, even if I disagree with you. And I will argue the point. I'm going to try to make you see things the way I want you to, but if you don't, it's okay. I love you, and I'm not going to wish harm or death or all these terrible things upon you. Guys, it's horrible. I remember when uh, recently, I believe it was a senator who passed away, and all these people just said the most horrible things about this person. And, oh, see, it serves them right. You know what? You know, death is such a sacred thing. It is such a final thing. Guys, I don't think it's right for you to be thinking that way. Look, God's judgment is God's judgment. We don't know why some people die. We really don't. We don't have those answers. But I can tell you that it's not, you know, most of the time it's not what you're thinking. Most of the time, it's just, you know what, it is what it is. And I'll, I'll, the, the example I give is, we can go to the Bible, the example of Jesus healing a man that was that was that uh, had an ailment. I believe it was the blind man. And so what did the person say? Someone asked, you know, why was this person sick? Why did they have this ailment? You know, was it because somebody sinned? And no, Jesus was like, no. They, you know, they had this so that so that I could glorify God in this. That hey, you know what? I healed this man. Now guess who gets the glory? God, the Creator, gets the glory. Now some people might think that's a terrible thing. Oh, this person had to suffer all their life and blah blah. Look, you know, unfortunately, you don't really get to question God and get much out of that. That's not really going to help you much. But like I said, the point is we don't always know why things happen. And it's the same thing with Rush Limbaugh when he was diagnosed with lung cancer. Some of the most horrific things I've ever seen in my life 
on if you go on Twitter, like this Twitter threads are just I mean it's just horrible. I can't even believe some of the things they would say they said about him. You know, some were like, Oh, that's not even enough. You should have every other kind of cancer. Just I mean, these people were just uh and again, that's such a hate filled heart. How can anybody like that how can they even have a viable relationship with anybody else? Because here's the thing. If they're saying that about Rush Limbaugh or saying that about anybody, how do you know you're not next on their list if you do something they don't like or say a little something they don't like? All of a sudden, now it's like, oh, he's off my list, that piece of garbage. Oh, yeah, I, w- I, you know, I hope he ends up you know, drowning in a septic tank or something. I mean, that's what people... You know, people like that that would say something like that, why would you not be on a list at some point? So, we got to be really careful. I just, uh, <laughs> it's just crazy, guys. Seriously. Totally insane. Man, I'm just, I'm totally incensed over this stuff. But anyway, I'll be right back. Let me just do a quick commercial. Hey, guys. Are you still shopping at those same big online stores? Well, I say no more. It's time for you to go over to the Michael Antonio shop and pick up some great gear at incredible prices. And remember something, I really care. Do you think Jeff Bezos would take the time to talk to you? I say no way. So don't forget, michaelantonio.biz slash shop. You will not regret it. Ciao. And I'm back. So, yeah, guys, just uh, understand that <laughs> there's there's so much there's so much hatred happening here now that we have to come to a point where you have to try. And I know it's difficult because people are so incredibly hateful now because of all this. And I'm just, um, man. Just amazing to me how people can be so hateful. And yet they remember these are the same people that preach tolerance. You know, they're constantly preaching tolerance when they're in power. When they have the power, when they have you know, when they're guys in office, all of a sudden they've got the power. You know what I mean? That's and that's the way it is sometimes. So and it's just uh, that's another thing I was gonna mention that you know you have you have these these people that are in charge now. A lot of people are in charge of Congress, the boomer generation. People like Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, she was in office, and and these different people. You know, they came up preaching freedom. Remember? That's what they were all about, free love, you know, free living. You know what I mean? They really, I mean, think about what they, think about what they engendered, these people. They, these were the people from Woodstock. They didn't want to be bothered. They wanted freedom. They want to be able to do what they want. And consequently, as a result of that, that free love, nothing's free, by the way. Um, because of that, a lot of disease ensued. A lot of people died from that, actually. But, you know, hey, it was their freedom, I guess. You know, that's what they wanted, you know. So, just to kind of draw the juxtaposition. So, you have these lockdowns going on, right? You still got some governors and some, you know, mayors that are locking down their their regions, their locales. And uh, I got a question for you. What would these boomers, you know, these people from our past generation before me, I'm a generation Xer. So I come, I'm the, I'm the child of this generation, the generation of the boomer. And and these baby boomers, they preached this free love and they just, they didn't want to be bothered. They didn't want governors sticking, you know, sticking their uh, face in our business. They wanted to be able to do what they wanted. So, so this is what they believed in. They believed in this freedom and they fought for it. Believe you me. Remember that? The women took their bras off in public and everything. They just went crazy. Well, here's my question for you. Do you think these boomers, let's say this stuff happened back then. Let's say there was a pandemic in, I don't know, let's say 1968. Okay, pandemic, 1968. Do you think these boomers, the ones that are now essentially in charge, it's the generation of Donald Trump. He is a boomer. He's a baby boomer. Would they obey these lockdowns today? Would these same people that believed in freedom for all, would they, in fact, obey the lockdown 
today. And yet these are the same people in charge. A lot of these same people are the ones locking us down, telling us we got to stay inside and wear the mask, do all this stuff. Oh, and by the way, just a little, you know, a little side note on this mask. All these looters and these rioters, some of them are wearing masks. Now you won't be able to identify them. They're committing crimes and you can't identify them. Hey, they're not stupid, right? They're just taking advantage of this new order, right? It happened the other day. Up, This poor woman, this employee of a sporting goods store in California, she was attacked by a customer, a masked customer. She had Her face was all bloodied up. She got hit with a piece of metal. I mean, this person was throwing things at her. And the person escaped. And you know what? Now they can't identify the customer because they had a mask on. Now, I want you to think about this. It's called unintended consequences. Incredible. Can you believe that? Amazing to me. I can't even believe it. I just can't even believe what's happening right now. Just incredible. Oh, I gotta, I gotta make this, I gotta comment before I go. I'm gonna go shortly, but I gotta comment. There's, there's this guy, John Fugel, saying there, uh, he's a, uh, an old MTV, I guess, VJ back in the day. This is the kind of stuff he writes. He's very anti Trump, kind of hateful, very hateful. He writes on here, uh, on, on, uh, Twitter. He says, Are you always okay with criminal foreign interference in U.S. elections or just when it benefits campaigns you like? <laughs> This guy, he just, I mean, he just, he's incredible with his hatred. Incredible hatred here. I just can't even believe the, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, so we got a lot going on. I just wanted to say this, guys. I wanted to talk about this because I think it's important for us to understand that you gotta, you gotta start with love. Like when you talk to somebody, if they show hatred towards you or what you believe in or say they hate Donald Trump and they want to do this or that, or they, look, start with the love. You don't have to agree with them. You can even tell them, look, what you're saying is wrong. I disagree with you. Donald Trump is not the things you say he is, and you have no evidence. yet. You can have your arguments. But remember, at the end of the day, try to love them. Try to feel sorry for their feelings. If they're so angry, look, they're tearing themselves apart. But, you know, you've got to have love, guys. You've got to start to love again. We can't have this rancor. It's it's tearing this country apart. I don't know if if it's ever going to be okay again in my generation here in the next twenty to forty years. I don't know what's going to happen. I just don't know. It's this is if it can get this bad over a presidential election when this president really has done nothing to show that he's hateful or racist or he has done nothing to show those things. He's done nothing but good for America. So no matter what they say about him, he's done good. He certainly has not been a tyrant. I know they say he's a Nazi and a this and a that, but if you think about it, the things that they are doing is what Nazis were doing. Quarantines, making you, you know, stay in your house and not go out, arresting you for not wearing a mask or, you know, in other words, not doing what they tell you to do. Things that are not crimes under the Constitution yet because they made some arbitrary order. Oh, all of a sudden now it's a crime and we can arrest you? There's no, This is arbitrary and it's criminal what they're doing and they are the ones acting like Nazis. That's a fact. Yet they call Donald Trump a Nazi. And so, like I said, it's easy to hate people like that, but you got to try to love. And you just, you just fight them with truth and you just stay true to who you are. And that's it. That's all you can do is pray for them and stay true to who you are. But guys, you know, that's enough for, uh, for tonight. I'm, I'm kind of going off here, but I'm sorry. I hope that you all have a great, uh, day. Whenever you see this, just try to enjoy your day. Just meditate, guys. And once again, I'll show you, uh, you can join me on Peace Conference here, uh, on Facebook, the Peace Conference group. Just look me up under Peace Conference, uh, facebook.com slash groups slash peace dot purpose. And I hope to see you there. You know, it sounds a little hokey. Maybe it, you know, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's nothing more than a prompt to make you think. Just meditate and pray. Just go and, even when you get up in the morning, just say a little prayer that Lord give me peace today. Give me a peace that passes all understanding that 
no matter what I'm going through or who hates on me or whatever they say, just I'm going to try my best to love and not to get angry. And no matter what they think, I'm going to do my best. And I, you know, I don't know how this is going to work out, guys. It's getting worse every day. Look what's happening. The, the America is on fire right now, guys. America is on fire. And I am just flabbergasted at all this. But, uh, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me. Please, if you get a chance, uh, like this video and share it wherever you can. Please do. Because I want people to, I want people to learn a thing or two about what, you know, where are we headed as a country if we're just going to hate each other? Where are we headed, guys? And with that, I'll bid you good night. Hey, guys, if you want more great content from me, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Come on, what are you waiting for?